that's the thing that keeps coming up? Is it mortgage interest rates? It's, it's, is that generally...? It's people on fixes uh, wondering what they do, whether their fix ends now or if their fix ends in a year. What should I do in absolute panic over the, uh, the pretty much emergency situation? And, of course, things change in the mortgage market all the time. Uh, uh, but the one thing that is absolutely certain right now is it's going to be more expensive than it was by a lot. Yeah. A lot more money. I can imagine that the other thing that uh, is coming up over and over again is how do people save money? Now we know what the cap on the unit price is yeah. for energy and standing charges. People are asking, how do I save money on my bill? And yesterday on the Sunday shows, uh, Nadim Zahawi was the minister who was out uh, for the government. And he was defending the fact that the government's decided not to run this energy saving information campaign. Because he says, well, all the information's actually out there already. Ofgem have got advice. And if you go onto dove.uk um, website, you can get advice. Here we go. These are, the, these are the ways you can save energy in your home. If you do go on to gov.uk, which I did yesterday, just be warned, it's quite complicated. I think, I think there may be... a lot of information you have to put in and that you should know about your house, including when exactly it was built. What one, uh, one has to be careful. I think there are other good sources of information about how to save energy out there on the internet, uh, but which I won't talk about. Uh, look, what's interesting, <laughs> uh, frankly, but I certainly think they're perhaps easier to you use. You might ones. provide some of that information I, on the internet. I, 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 Ofcom would not allow me to say that. <laughs> um, so, look, I think there's a couple of points on this. The first of all, it made me smile that apparently the reason we haven't done this £15 million campaign is not because they, uh, it, they th worried it smacked of paternalism, but because it was expensive. I mean, we're, we're bailing out the energy industry to about a, the tune of £130 billion. Yeah. So, if you could change behaviour by £0.1 billion, that would be 130, a point one percent. That would be a, what 130 million, mm. right? And I've got that wrong. 30 million. But anyway, so it would be a very small. <laughs> I'm never going to argue with you about would, figures. It would by be the a way. very <laughs> sm shouldn't do shouldn't do that live as I'm talking. It would be a very small change would be needed yeah. to save the government a very large amount mm. of money. So the idea that we're not spending 15 million to do this, I, I find quite a difficult one to add up. Mm. The other interesting thing. You have to go to gov.uk, go mm. to the Energy Saving Trust, go to any other sites that are available that mm. may be able to help you on mm. this. The idea of an information campaign is not that it is a pull campaign that has to bring people in. We need a push campaign yeah. that goes out and reach people, reaches people with the messages. And there are many messages, a lot of questions, you know, Classic one I always get, should you have the heating on all day or should you only turn it on when you need? I mean, it's actually a really interesting debate. In shortcuts, turn the heating on when you need it. Don't have it on all day. There are some limited circumstances where it may work the other way. You know, flow rates on your boiler. There's lots of things that we could be doing and there's lots of information out there that people are confused about. You know, I've, I've made a living out of the fact that people don't have this information and don't find it that easy to get to and I don't think that there is a, a combined unified source. Who should pay for it? Well, is it the energy companies? Is it the government? But we absolutely, when we are genuinely at a position where there is a risk to energy security, mm. which is a posh way of saying that there might have to be, you know, blackouts if we get in extreme circumstances this winter, to not be going out there and saying, here are some sensible things you can do that will cut your energy usage, that are beneficial to your pocket, that are beneficial to the environment, and that are beneficial to everybody else in a communal, societal manner that means, uh, you know, your older neighbour who lives next door who's struggling a bit might not have a blackout. I, I, I struggle to see that as paternalistic. Paternalistic is telling people what to do. Paternalistic mm. is not providing people information of how they can do things. Yeah. Well, when I went on to gov.uk, um, one of the three things that gov.uk told me to do was to install solar panels. That's a lot of money to save some energy. Look, solar panels are, uh, have a, a long-term outlay. The, the mass on them is much better than it was recently, although the, the amount that you get paid for generating electricity w w has been cut a lot. The mm. government subsidies have pretty much gone on that, so it's a market rate. They can pay you back now in about 10, 12 years, but it's 10, 12 years worth of outlay in order to get the payback. The point I it think is not people instant want, and easy. Yeah, what people want is how to save money today on their energy bills right well, now. There are, there's a lot of information out there. You know, I, I hit one of the things that I, I'm trying to be careful for the, for the reason I mentioned earlier. 
When I asked my team, and I won't say what team that is, I asked them earlier in the year to write a guide yeah. called How to Heat the Human, Not the Home, yeah. which is a very depressing guide to ask them to write. And I wanted them to do it, and we did a lot of research. It's actually been brilliant, and lots of people have come up uh, being very thankful. Mm. You know, the concept that you have a USB-heated gilet while you're sitting at your desk, you know, a sleeveless vest, or even actually USB gloves, which uses very, very little power compared to central heating. You know, it's less than a penny an hour's cost and actually gives you a feeling of warmth and comfort in your home. All of these things are perfectly doable. Electric blankets, be safe with them, make sure that they're new mm. and worked out, the fire risk in your bed is a lot cheaper than central heating. I'm not saying people... And again, this is that paternalistic thing. I'm not saying people... I'm not saying you should be doing that. I'm saying if you're worried about the cost or you want to cut your electricity bill, these are some of the options that you could look at that may be helpful.